Welcome to the Anchor Hour, a program of the Harvest Hill Baptist Church, San Antonio, Texas. You know, seeing from the right perspective is a very important thing if you want to see the entirety of what you're looking for. So you get to the highest point, you get to the right side, you get to the right location to get the full picture of whatever it is you're looking at. And so in John chapter 12, in verse 21, we kind of see a desire. And this ought to be, and it is at some point in everybody's life, where they have this desire. And in John 12 and verse 21, it says, The same came therefore to Philip, which was of Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. And so every person that is ever born comes to the place where they want to see Jesus. However, unfortunately, we have a, an adversary that tries to keep people from seeing Jesus in the right perspective. Oh, they may see him as a man. They may see him as a prophet. They may see him as, a, uh, as a, an angelic being or a good teacher or whatever, but they don't see the right Jesus, the full Jesus, the whole Jesus. If you'll read your entire um, uh, Gospels, the four books of the Bible, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will get a, uh, if you look at it and read it honestly, you will see a full perspective of Jesus Christ from many different angles. In Matthew chapter 12, I'm sorry, Matthew chapter 16, starting in verse 13, it says, And when Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And so Jesus was asking the disciples, what's the gossip on the street? What do people say who I am? What is their their perspective when they see me or talk about me? And so they answered him in verse 14, and it says, And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some say Elias, some others say Jeremiah." Or, other, or one of the prophets? And verse 15 is a very important question, and this is the question that maybe I, I could pose to you this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever you're at. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? What do you, who do you say Jesus is? Now, I love this verse, and, and Jesus uh, asked who that is, and Simon Peter, uh, God bless him, He says in in verse 16, Simon Peter answered and said unto him, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Simon Peter has seen Christ in the right perspective. And he says very confidently that he is the Christ, that he is the Son of the living God, that he is the Messiah. So for most, most of us, the knowledge and the life of Jesus Christ has been part of our lives for a long time. I hope it has been yours. If it hasn't, you can do that now. See, for some, he is a, is a distant thought or some, uh, some, uh, somewhat of a foreign, distant kind of a concept, maybe even a mysterious figure. Do you know, to many in our country, Jesus is, is just a founder of a religion. You know, we, we live in a day, I've been at this church since the 90s, and I have seen society change as we go out into our neighborhoods and, and, and do, uh, declare Christ to them. And there was a time early on when everybody knew something about the Bible. They knew something about the, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They knew something of, some, of the Old Testament, and they knew something of the, Old, the New Testament. But now we live in a day where very few people... And we've even come across people that didn't even know who Jesus was. Why is that? Well, a person must have the right perspective. And we try to do that here. That means that everyone has to have a new perspective, not a worldly perspective, a right perspective. So when you read the four Gospels, you're going to find that most of the people that approach Jesus, follow Jesus, talk to Jesus, uh, uh, had interactions with him, had the wrong perspective of who he was and what he was saying. They couldn't understand exactly his sayings. His sayings were very hard, and they didn't understand what he was doing. The wrong perspective is to be completely uninterested in who or what or why. They were just looking for what it was for them, what he could provide for them, some bread, some fish, some healing. 
So the wrong perspective is to respect him in a, a religiously. And religiously, that means that we approach him at a distance, at a respectful distance, at arm's length, what pastor said a long time ago. That's what religion does. It puts God somewhere out of reach, and we just kind of um, uh, observe him from afar. See, it could, uh, you know, the reason that is, is we need to see him in a different light. See, to be born again, to be saved, it is to see Jesus, who he really is, to have that, what I call the boom moment, the moment when the light changes uh, or turns on, that it, that it instantly changes your perspective of who he is. You see him in all of a sudden of a different light, the light of the word of God. See, it could be a, a change of circumstance, a change of life. It could be a, a change of an attitude or, or, or that and find out that you're not so perfect and you're not so good to get into heaven. It could be just a change in understanding that you don't know everything like everybody today thinks they do because they have YouTube. See, of course, the Bible is where we find out how to see Jesus, how that in the light of the Word of God, we see him as he is uh, not what man says he is. There is not one of us that needs, uh, that does not need a fresh and a holy view of Jesus Christ. We need to get back to the Bible. In John chapter 12, we said, sirs, would, uh, he said, sirs, we would see Jesus. Do you have a desire to see Jesus? The place to go is the word of God. There's some examples here that we could give you this, uh, uh, this day. That the shepherds, remember the shepherds, I, I think that uh, Jesus was probably born, according to the, the word of God, sometime late uh, September, late uh, or early October. And so I'm thinking about Luke chapter 2, when the, the shepherds were in the fields on a nice warm, uh, warm uh, September day or night, keeping watch over their flock. And the, that angel appeared unto them and that glory of the Lord shone round about them, and it says they were sore afraid. Verse 10 says, The angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger." It tells about the multitude of the heavenly host praising God and singing. Talks about him calling him glory to God and on the highest earth and uh, uh, goodwill towards men. Then it, in verse 15, this, the, uh, the shepherds get together and it says, And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said, and, sh said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. Then it says, And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they may had made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning the child. The shepherds are definitely a, a type of pastors today. We are supposed to be out uh, telling uh, the world uh, everything that was uh, told to us and that we have seen and we, that we have experienced with our, with our heart uh, concerning this child, this child that grew out of that manger, lived his, his life, uh, found uh, him as a perfect lamb for the, the sacrifice of the sins of you and me, and to tell them about the risen Savior. And so we have the shepherds saw him as the incarnate one, God manifest in the flesh. Yes, Jesus is God. In John chapter 1 and verse 14, it says, The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. And so the Word was made flesh, Jesus Christ, God's Word in the flesh. We need to see him in the right perspective. We've re relegated him to be just a a second person of the Trinity, and not really thinking about what it is. You get in that Bible, and you'll see that this Bible talks about 
Jesus Christ from cover to cover. He said it was the scriptures that testify of him. It tells us he also finds that we find out the other testimony that is given to the child of God is the Holy Ghost of God that testifies of Jesus Christ. See, the right perspective is who Jesus truly is. And you will say, let us go, or let us now go. You will make haste, and then you will make you will make known what you have experienced seeing the true Savior. There's a after that Jesus was born, there's a, a man named Simeon. He saw him as the saving one. We find this also in the book of Luke in chapter 2 that gives us about the birth of Christ. And it says, And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was a just and devout, was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And it says, He came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he up in his arms, him up in his arms, and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word, for mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people. Israel, Simeon, saw him as the saving one. See, the moment you know that who Jesus is, you'll know that he is salvation. It is not your denomination. It cannot be your religion. It cannot be a ceremony. It cannot be your goodness or your righteousness or your, or your self-motivation or whatever it is that you um, always uh, tell God he can't send you to heaven or can't send you to hell because you're so good or you did this or that. He is salvation. Without him, there is no salvation. He doesn't need our help. He doesn't need our assistance. He doesn't even need us to do anything to keep it. He is salvation. It is in his hands. He is not, he is not one, uh, who you are working to please to get to heaven. He is salvation. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given unto men, whereby we must be saved. John, he's called the Savior. John chapter 4, he's called the Savior of the world. In Philippians 3, we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, it says, Who is the Savior of all men, especially of those that believe? In 1 John 4, 14, we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Is he your Savior? Or did you add something to it? Are you helping him with your water baptism? Are you helping him with your goodness and your giving or your, your ceremonies? Or are you re fully relying in the sacrifice of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, his blood and his, and his sacrifice, his salvation? In John 6, 6, 6, in John chapter 6, verse 66, we see that the disciples turn away from Jesus. They walk with him no more. Isn't that an interesting uh, chapter? Chapter 6 and verse 66, 666. In verse 67, it says, Then Jesus saith unto his disciples that walk back, he says, Will you also go away? Peter told him, he says, Where will we go? Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. How do you see Jesus? Is he your Savior? Is he an assistant to your, your salvation? Go to harvesthillbaptistchurch.com for more information and a free King James Bible, harvesthillbaptistchurch.com.